What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today we're going to be going over how you can get the auto build ability as well as the camera ability in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna be going over the location of the camera ability, the Hyrule Compendium, as well as auto build. You don't have to have the camera and Hyrule Compendium in order to get auto build. However, that quest line sets you up for the auto build quest line. In addition, you don't need to have any other sort of completion done in order to do this. As soon as you unlock the paraglider, you have the ability to go get the camera plus Hyrule Compendium and auto build. You don't have to do any of the quest lines involving the four races of, of people of Hyrule, you're just good to go. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the deep down, the lower part that hasn't been officially shown, so if you consider that a spoiler, don't watch the video, but this is a guide on how to do that exact thing, so here we go. As soon as you get your Purra pad, Purra's assistant is gonna be running down here next to Robbie, and she's gonna be saying, come on, please. You could have targeted her upstairs, but she's gonna be like, hey, wait till I get downstairs. Robbie, you're actually back. It's been a long time. Absolutely. This is Robbie, the head of the Purra pad development. You may know him a little bit from the first game, although his character was flushed out a lot more in Age of Calamity. Joshua, who uh, is not an adult yet, you can tell by her height, although that's misleading because Robbie's shorter, wants to go investigate the depths and wants to go into the chasm. Joshua, head of depths research, is going to want you to go underneath ground and go take a picture of that statue. Robbie says Link is gonna join me and then he's gonna run underground ahead of you and then after you get down there and you find him, you're gonna be able to unlock the camera. She's gonna give you some bright bloom seeds and some arrows and says, hey, camera work in the depths. This is gonna lead you to the Hyrule Field Chasm, which is right next to the Joycean Shrine. After making your way to the Hyrule Field Chasm, all we're gonna do is hop inside. Now, for this little bit, this quest here, you don't have to have a lot. As you're making your way into the depths, you really want to focus on wherever you're going to be seeing these glistening lights, which are going to be fireflies. They're typically above ground. Any sort of torches that you're going to be seeing, as well as pose. These are pose. You're going to need to collect a lot of pose in the game for a lot of very nice armor. In addition, as you're going down, you may see some light roots in the distance. You may want to go ahead and mark those light roots. We made our way to the torch, and this has now unlocked the depths. And if you hit minus, you now have access to the depths. Now those light roots that I unlocked, you're going to notice that they directly correspond with shrines in the overworld. So as long as you already found them in the overworld, you actually don't need to mark them with the parapad. Instead, you could just go to the map, which is what I do, and I just highlight it, tap down, go up, highlight it, tap down, go up. And I do this, that way I can have a very good understanding on where the immediate light routes are going to be for me. What's really nice about this is, say for example, I activated all of these light routes, there's going to be some dark area in the middle, which lets me know that there's going to be a light route in the middle. And after I find that light route, but I don't have the shrine, I can highlight the light route, go up to the surface and find that shrine location. I also know for a fact that I'm next to a light route, so let's go ahead and activate that. Activating your first light route, there's gonna be a little bit of a cutscene showing you that the light is gonna be coming down from the shrine in the overworld through these routes, and it's going to illuminate the immediate area. How large of an area it illuminates is really dynamic. It has to do with how far the next light route is away. But after you link two in a row, you're going to notice that that entire path is going to be illuminated at all heights. So eventually you're going to reach a point that all of the depths is going to be illuminated. And there we go. Our first look at dispelling the darkness. And also, anytime that you're affected by gloom down here, if you come to a light route, you're gonna have all of your gloom hearts removed. Walk through it really quickly, you're gonna be fine. I notice it's about two full seconds in order for you to lose a heart. But if you are in it for more than two seconds, you're gonna permanently lose a heart. Now, if you recover food right now, you're not gonna actually be regaining anything. However, you can eat food that gives you temporary hearts, and as you'll see at the top, you get four temporary hearts in addition to your lost gloom heart. Come underneath the light route, and that's gonna be restored. There's also a variety of food that you can cook that would achieve the same results. 
Now, if you don't have a lot of the underground unlocked as far as brightness, something you could do is take out bright bloom seeds, and I recommend shooting them as high as possible. That way their arc is very long, and it's gonna go as far as it can. And now we have a little bit more illuminated. Alternatively, you could fire giant bright bloom seeds, which will fly just as far, but illuminate a bigger area. Now, there was a quest giver over here who's going to tell us which way Robbie went. I'm pretty sure it's directly west, even though he's looking south, which is weird. Oh, yeah, he went west. OK, good. You can make it on foot. You can build a device or one of my favorite ways. Oh, muddle buds, bro. Grab muddle buds. They are so good for taking down high level enemies from this light route. If you look directly west, you're going to be seeing stall horses. Stall horses used to be in Breath of the Wild and only available ridden by stall coblins. However, any time that sun came up, they unfortunately perished. But in the depths, since there's no sun, they could just ride on and on forever and they never have to worry about, you know, dying to sunlight. Feel free to approach them as stealthily or non-stealthily as you would like. Mount it. They usually don't require any soothing. And now we are off to the races. These stall horses are not affected by gloom. And when you're on the back of one, you could walk and trot through gloom, no problem. From this light route, you're gonna be seeing this little camp off to the west. We're gonna continue in this direction. We see a light route directly ahead of us. I like to personally go ahead and mark it down with a pin. That way it's on my mini map as the direction I have to go. Now you may come across some fires in the distance and you might see some red emanating. These are gloom enemies. If they hit you, they're gonna be doing gloom damage to you and reducing your total hearts. And the reason they're down here is they are actually mining zonite. Zonite is gonna be used for a lot of things and while you're down here, if you see an explosion barrel, I recommend shooting it because that's going to hurt a lot of them. The archers you may wanna take them out, switch to a better bow. Also, my favorite reason for getting one of the stall horses is you're gonna get that immediate arrow time anytime that you want. Nice. That's gonna be all the enemies cleared, and unless you're at an official encampment, you're not gonna hear like the -na 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 song that lets you know that a chest unlocked. And it is super dark right here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fire a bright bloom seed at the floor so I can actually see what's going on. These ore deposits are different from the ones on the surface. These are zonite ore deposits. That you're going to be getting zonite from them, which you learn about in the Sky Island at the very beginning of the game. And occasionally you're going to be getting large zonite. In addition, the Bokoblin who is wearing the backpack may have zonite on him as well. So be sure to get his five pieces. And once this area is cleared out, you are good. Now, the difficulty of these enemies directly relates to how many of the four individual races that you helped out already. I'm just gonna go ahead, get back on my horse, and let's make our way to that light route. And now that we've made our way to the light route, we are good. And now the complete path between these two light routes is going to be fully illuminated. And if I look back as to the way that I just came, you're gonna see fully lit up. Nice. And here's Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Robbie found a crazy looking statue. Now, just to let you know, there are hundreds of these statues down here. And they're all pointing toward very different things. Oh, and this is also gonna unlock the Hyrule Compendium, nice. So Robbie wants to task you with taking out your camera and taking a picture of this guy. Keep in mind that you have to have the little, the little speech bubble for it to be registered properly. So if you took this, it doesn't work. Oh, even if you zoomed in a whole bunch, it still works. Okay, they're very forgiving with this tutorial one. The Hyrule Compendium is one of the completion things that you can do for this game, which includes taking a picture of every enemy, weapon, material, animal, ore deposit, chest, things like that. And it is a large, long task. Now, you ready for a secret? Austin's going to show you a secret, something that you don't supposed to find quite yet, but it's going to be very, very helpful. And it actually took me a long time to find it. Let's just fire off a giant bright bloom in a few directions. Yep, this is the way. Good. If I come over to this cliffside, you're going to be seeing some stairs going up. Now, there are various types of structures in the depths. There are large mini boss areas filled with uh, flux constructs like on the surface. 
There are these smaller ones, which are mines. There are larger mines that allow you to exchange your Zonaite for crystallized charges, which you can then use to expand your battery. And I know it's here somewhere. There it is. This structure that has a roof on it, you immediately want to go to any of these small abandoned mine roof structures because there's going to be a piece of hidden clothing there. These pieces of hidden clothing can be anything from new armor sets to items that were only exclusive if you purchase the DLC in Breath of the Wild to items that are exclusive only if you owned the amiibo and you unlocked it in Breath of the Wild. So this chest right here, for reference on the map, that's the light route that we just went to. And then I went west by southwest to this plus sign down to Daphnis Canyon Mine. And opening this up, we're gonna be getting a brand new piece of armor, the Miner's Top, which gives you glow. This glow, when you're in complete darkness, is not that helpful. Once you get to level two and level three glow, it becomes very helpful. And what's the set bonus for this? I took a note on this. Oh, here it is. It's called Shining Steps. I don't actually know what that does yet. <laughs> well, anyways, once you're done down here, let's make our way back to Lookout Landing where our quest is gonna be continuing and making our way back to where Robbie was. He's gonna say it was a success. Hey, you, hey, Robbie. Show Joshua the picture that took the statue. She's gonna give you a few Zonite, which is cool. Well, great, now we have the camera rune unlocked. From here, there's going to be some progression that happens over time with Jasha, and she's gonna be finding more of these little statue rune things, even though most of them are literally just next to her and she just needs to put them onto the board. I'm just gonna fast forward and let you know exactly what it's pointing to. It points to a large lengthy path that you have to go through the entire place that's going to lead you to right about here. How do I know it's right about here? Because if you go to the Great Plateau and you look at the Temple of Time ruins, you're just gonna wanna go underneath the Temple of Time. That's it, that's all you have to do in order to get auto build. Our next objective is to make our way over to the Temple of Time, which there are a few shrines on the Great Plateau. There's one over here that's underground from this cave that I unlocked. There's this one, which is right out in the open. You probably saw it from the outskirts stable. And then there's also gonna be one down here behind the waterfall. So those are your three shrines on the Great Plateau. Uh, these heart icons or are Koroks that I'm going after and the leaf ones are Korok travel quests that I'm going after after I get auto build. And if you don't know how I got this really cool top called the Miner's Top, which makes it so that you glow, you may want to rewind the video and go watch part of the camera section. Great. So now that I'm at the Great Plateau, I'm going to be making my way down this chasm right here, which is located at the top right of the Great Plateau. God, I love that. I love that when that brass kicks in. And I forgot to power glider. <laughs> and then landing on these pose and collecting these pose. We're gonna talk about the Bargainer statue shortly. I'm just gonna, in one video, go over the location of all the Bargainer statues to make it easier for you because it's required for an outfit. You may already know a little bit about that, but there's a lot more to learn. While you're in the depths, you have these fun areas that have a whole bunch of buildables. After you unlock auto build, these are gonna be your favorite thing in the world because they just have a little bit of everything that you need. In the meantime, I'm just gonna build myself a quick and easy hovercraft, which is going to be one sled, one controller, one fan on the back, and because we're in the depths, I'm gonna grab a light and put that on the front as well. Now, objective number one, let's go activate our first light route, that way it's not so dang dark down here. And if you can see off in the distance, there's a large illuminated structure, that's actually gonna be our destination. Once we unlock light route, you can see just a little bit of it to the south. And there we go. That's the structure I'm talking about. Also, you're gonna see some of these pose with red on them. These pose are worth 20 pose, as you could probably imagine because of the rupee structure. Oh, I forgot I do not have any extended battery, so we're not doing that. I'm just gonna hoof it. Grand pose, that's their name. You're also gonna be finding blue ones, and you could probably guess how much those are worth. Here is the Great Abandoned Central Mine. As you walk forward through this very, very suspiciously blank area and there's nothing here, you're gonna be seeing a Zonai hand thing and a guy standing there and a girl standing next to the guy. We interact with the hand thing. We get a fast travel point. And Stuart over here is gonna be saying auto build is now authorized. And there you go, there's your sixth and final ability being unlocked. 
and then these two are going to require a demonstration. Oh. Although you actually oh. don't have to do this right now, <laughs> but you might as well. Auto build is going to remember everything that you've built. So I just attach that, which then if you now highlight auto build, you're going to have three sections here. The top section is going to be for favorited. The second section is going to be for blueprints that you can acquire throughout the world in various ways. Pro tip, go check out the Shrine of Resurrection. And the third is going to be your history. So from here, you can favorite things and then you're going to see in the favorites tab, you have it there. I don't recommend favoriting this because it doesn't have a controller, so there's no way to control it. Oh no, they were Yiga foot soldiers. And it's Master Koga, who there is no possible way that this is a spoiler because in the last game, you hit him into the underground and he is now in the underground. Come on. <laughs> like, who do you expect to be down here? Seriously. The strong, the depths defying, from the ashes rising. Master Koga. From here, Master Koga is going to show up with a big old crazy looking car in that big blank area that we were at before. And he is a very simple battle. All you need to do is just shoot him. It does not need to be a headshot. And then if you have a powerful weapon, you may want to use that. But for me, I'm saving that for my Lionel fights. Let's just use the stall arms. He's going to respawn. And now he's going to be behind a thing. But it doesn't provide him a lot of cover. He's going to respawn in once he lands. Oh, too early. There we go. Anytime he spawns in with the rockets, all you want to do is run perpendicular to the path. And then he's going to be stunned. You don't even have to shoot him. And then he's going to spawn back in without it. From here, all you need to do is just run to the back. Do not climb on top, because that will cause it to despawn, or just avoid it for long enough for him to spawn in with rockets again. And then just repeat until KO. Master Koga says he found a whole bunch of ruins down here, and that he's gonna head to the southwestern abandoned mine. Now, you don't have to follow him and go to the southwest. It's sort of like an optional part of the story much later. You can if you want to. It's going to be a pretty great way for you to extend your overall battery, but not mandatory right now. Speaking of extending your battery, he's going to be dropping this chest and you're going to get a huge crystallized charge. Stuart is then going to be telling you that following that one light route, there's going to be a series of statues that are going to point in that direction and also to speak with Stuart over here to get your first blueprint. I think they're called schematics. Schema stone, not schematics. And that's for fan plane, which is a pretty basic yet good plane. And then anytime you do that, there's going to be a demonstration of how to do it. Well, not demonstration, but an area with all the things that you need. And they're designed for you to just build it and then take away. Also, by doing this, you've unlocked this forge right here. This forge construct is going to be able to take your Zonite and convert it into crystallized charges for yourself. I do not recommend doing this with regular Zonite because you're going to be using it for auto build. However, the large Zonite, while it's used for only a small amount of armor upgrades, is going to be for large crystallized charges. So three of these equals 20 crystallized charges, which is great. But if you remember, we just got 100 crystallized charges. And if you don't remember, we're going to make our way back to the ability to rewind shrine right at the beginning of the game. Spawning back in here, we're going to speak with this Stuart. And this is the crystal refinery. For 100 crystallized charges, you're going to get yourself a third of a battery. As far as I know, you can upgrade it 45 times. So that would be a total of 4,500 crystallized charges for as many energy wells as you're going to need to max out your battery. I don't know if it can go beyond that. Hey, look, it lights up on my belt. So now that you have the auto build ability, there's going to be so many different things you're going to be able to make, make them anytime that you want. Just a little pro tip before you start with your auto builds, you definitely want to put down an save 
because you may not be building the right thing. You may think it's the right thing, but it's not. Like, if I build this fan plane, but it's not this one, it's a slightly different one, and I'm like, oh, this fan needs to be somewhere else. If you detach it, it disappears because it's not a real object. It was just made out of goo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. Alternatively, if you have the items in your inventory, this one wing and these three fans, you drop them down. Choose fan plane. You're gonna see that the zonite requirement becomes zero. Make sure they all line up and then you can build it. If it's made with real items, you can then move them out of the way. Also, while you're building, you don't have to click the build button. You can just use this to gather items together for you. All you have to do is select this and then drop it down. Everything is going to be right where you need. And then you could put the pieces together yourself. Just some helpful auto build tips right from the start. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you're going to be able to get auto build in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, as well as the, the camera, which is, you know, super important. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.